How to defend in Valorant. The inherent advantage of the defending side is that defenders can drop multiple kills holding one choke point as the attackers enter, rather than being paranoid about clearing multiple angles when hitting a site. So if defense is supposed to be easier, then why do we lose defending rounds? Well, there are a variety of factors that go into a solid defense. Let's start talking about early round defense. Before the round starts, you want to set up on the site that the attackers are going to hit. It is much harder to play retake, and if you want to win more rounds, you need to be positioned on the correct site to break the attacker's momentum, get early man advantage, or destroy their push. Essentially, being at the right site allows you to take the game into your own hands. It is also important to note that if your teammates are easily holding down one site and you are easily holding down your site, then there is no need to change your setup. You don't need to force a setup change if it is working. Still, setting up on the right site every time is a skill in itself and it's impossible to do flawlessly. But here are a few tips that I use to determine what site the attackers are going to go to. So make sure to pay attention. The first tip is to recognize a pattern that the attackers are doing. Many times they will just be going back and forth between A site and B site. The next tip is that attackers will tend to keep doing plays that work and avoid plays that did not work for them. Say the attackers just rushed you on one site and absolutely demolished your team. The next round, expect them to hit the same site again because attackers tend to keep doing plays that went well for them. If the attackers steamroll on one site, they will keep going to that site until you can steamroll them back. Now let's say the attackers went to the A site and you destroyed them. In general, the next round, you want to set up on the opposite site because there's a low chance the attackers will come to the same site they just got crushed on. Say the attackers lost immediately going to both sites. Then the next round, you should expect the attackers to try something new and play through mid. Next, let's say the attackers failed to push on both A and B site. However, when they hit B site, they were able to get the plant off. The next round, expect them to hit the B site because they had at least planted the bomb. Lastly, let's say the attackers were on a save round and got the plant off on A site but still lost. The next round, you want to set up on A site because the attackers are probably thinking they can win now that they have proper guns. Essentially, attackers will either go in a predictable pattern between sites or keep running plays that work for them. So you need to observe weaknesses in your defense, strengths in the attacker's offense, and use pattern recognition to set up on the right site. And before I get to the next tip, make sure to drop a like, hit that subscribe button, and turn notifications on so you can get better at Valorant. Let's get this channel over a thousand subs. And follow my Twitch where I go live on weekdays. I'd love to talk to you guys. After setting up on the right site, you need to pay attention to your early round positioning. I'll start by mentioning what you should not be doing as a defender, which is pushing out of your site just to aim duel the attackers every round. There is no smart play behind this other than relying on your aim being better than the opponent's. You should instead hold angles where the enemies will come to you rather than swinging the attackers and dying. That is why early round positioning on defense is the most important aspect to winning your defensive half. Factors that go into early round positioning include what agent you are playing and what gun you have, and what agents you are reversing and what guns they have. First, you need to position yourself in a spot that is best for your agent. When I play chamber on ascent, I like to position myself in a spot no other agent can play. This usually catches attackers off guard. For example, if I am on B site, I play boat and TP out after I get a kill. I notice that a lot of people who are not chamber like to play boat as well, but it is a terrible spot for them because they cannot TP out. If I am playing Sova on B site of ascent, I would stand in lane and use my shock darts to bounce it off the entrance and get easy damage while the attackers try to rush out. From lane, I can reposition to back site and even shoot my recon dart at the wall to know if the attackers are out or not. Next, the gun you have also determines your early round positioning. Now, if you have a rifle or operator, you want to play near cover and hold angles where the attackers would come from. You do not want to play in a spot that you cannot escape from. For example, a lot of people like to play behind generator on A site of icebox. If it is a full buy round for both you and the attackers, then you will probably be cleared out by utility and die swinging out of that spot. Instead, you should be playing in a spot like top of nest or rafters so you can easily reposition after taking a gunfight. Do not corner yourself in a spot that has no escape plan other than fighting the enemies. Also, if you have a rifle or operator on defense, you want to hold an angle that you can reach before the attackers can get there. For example, on Seaside Haven, you want to be looking at sea long to know if the attackers are going to hit the sea site. Another example is on B side of Fracture, where you can look down the stair from this angle. Here, you are waiting for the attackers to come to you rather than swinging them. It is important to note that you can either take an immediate gunfight or use that time to reposition to another spot and get multiple kills as the attackers enter site. On the other hand, your early round positioning changes if you are on a save round. The best weapon a defender can buy in a save round is a shotgun. You should position yourself very close to a choke point and inside smokes to catch the attackers off guard. On save rounds, it is fine to play in rad spots and areas with no escape other than fighting the enemies because you have a shotgun. Also, don't buy the marshal on a save round, it's a waste of money. Unless you have aim like 10s, the reward to risk ratio is not worth it. 
and you're better off buying a shorty or a bucky and playing a close angle. Now, let's talk about how the opponent's agent composition affects your early round positioning. You never want to play in a spot that the attackers constantly use utility on. A simple example is playing backside B or cubby on bind when you're reversing a raise. The enemy raise will always throw her nade in those spots and you will take so much unnecessary damage. Because you are facing a raise, you need to play in other spots such as the box outside of hookah, garden, top of sight, elbow, and anywhere else that nade won't land. If the attackers are using a lot of utility in certain spots, ask your teammates to help you out. For example, you can double up in hookah with shotguns to stop the attackers from rushing in or have instant smokes to pause the attackers momentum. At the same time, you need to position yourself according to the enemy team's ultimates. For example, if you are on fracture and are facing a breach or brimstone who have their ults, you do not want to stand on top or bottom of a site because they will just use their ultimates there and you will have no chance to survive. Instead, you have to play a main, sand, or dish to dodge those ults. Moving on, you should position yourself keeping the enemy's gun in mind. If the attackers are on a save round, then you do not want to push out of spawn or give any unnecessary peeks. This is because the attackers are most likely playing slow, getting into rat spots, and hoping the defenders peek or push them. Also, if they manage to kill you and take your gun, then you've made it much more easy for the attackers to win the round. Likewise, if the attackers are using an operator, you should not be peeking for the same reason that they are hoping a defender will swing them, and their operator will be much less useful if no one swings. Now, Say you have good early round positioning, but the attackers are using so much utility that holding angles is not working and you keep losing a sight. This is the situation where you need to become aggressive, establish map control, and make the attackers scared of pushing. Normally, pushing out as a defender is wrong, but there is a correct way of doing it. If you want to push out and fight the attackers because they keep rushing your sight, then you need to have a teammate help you out with their utility before you peek. Remember, dry swinging an angle is a straight aim duel, but having your teammate use some sort of utility to give you an advantage is a smart play. For example, if you want to swing out of B stairs on Fracture, have your teammate flash for you before you peek. This way you can get an easy kill on the attackers rather than making a gamble play with your aim. Another example is having a Sova shoot a recon dart for you as you peek from A site on Icebox. That way the attackers will either be scanned for you or will turn around to shoot the dart as you peek out for an easy kill. Essentially, Aggressive peaks combined with your teammate's utility is an effective way to stop the attackers from rushing a site. Also, if you notice a teammate is pushing out and dying on defense, rather than getting upset at him for throwing rounds, combo your utility with him so that he has a higher chance of winning his gunfight. After pushing out and getting one kill, do not get greedy for more kills. As a defender, getting one kill and dying is not good enough. So try to get one kill and leave because your only focus should be getting a numbers advantage. So to summarize, Early round defense consists of setting up on the right site, positioning yourself according to your utility and weapons as well as the enemy's utility and weapons, and coordinating peaks with your teammates utility to stop the attacker's rush. And make sure not to do the exact same plays or setups over and over because you will become too predictable. A good way to prevent this is to practice multiple setups and plays on different sites. Next, let's talk about mid round defense. This occurs when the attackers are not rushing a site and are playing slow. Mid round defense is all about patience, repositioning, and information gathering. As the defender, you need to be patient and hold your angle. Just because someone does not peek you or make sound after two seconds does not mean they are not there. Even if your teammate spotted an enemy on the other site, don't get comfortable thinking no one is at your site. This means you should not over rotate until your teammates tell you for sure that enemies have entered a site. Likewise, when you are rotating, make sure you are not walking with your knife out in areas attackers could be at. For example, when rotating from C to A or A to C on Haven, make sure you are looking at B main in case anyone has lurked through there. You need to expect the unexpected when attackers are playing slow. Next, repositioning as a defender will guarantee you more kills. After getting a kill on site, you want to reposition to a different spot to increase your chances of getting another kill. For example, say you are on backside C of Haven and get a kill on someone going up C long. Rather than staying back site, you should reposition yourself next to logs and hold long. This is a super useful strategy because the enemy will be calling out to his teammate one is back sight, and they will have their crosshair placed there while they enter. Then you can catch them off guard because you are standing in a new position. Repositioning is the most useful skill to get multi kills on a site. The last part of mid round defense is information gathering. As a defender, you cannot just stare at a wall and give space for attackers to lurk up. You need to be watching relevant angles where the attackers could come from, especially mid. Gathering information is as simple as jiggle peeking and jump peeking areas where the attackers could come from. Jump peeking lets you get information about where the attackers are and protects you from dying. This is a 
fundamental skill in Valorant to get information and dodge shots. Jiggle peeking is good just so that you are not a stationary target when the attackers choose to enter your site. Here you can quickly get information before the attackers hit the site and it gives you the option to back off rather than being forced into a gunfight. Remember, in mid-round defense, the attackers are playing slow and are waiting for you to make a mistake. So expect the unexpected, reposition after a kill, and use peeking to get quick information. Lastly, let's talk about late round defense. This occurs when the attackers have taken the site and planted the bomb. Retaking the site and defusing the bomb is the hardest part of the defending side. This is because your roles have switched, where the defenders now need to clear multiple angles to retake and the attackers need to hold the choke points where the defenders can come from. When retaking, the most important thing to do is to ask teammates to wait so you can push as a unit. Retaking is significantly harder to do when everyone pushes in one by one and dies. Before you retake, ask your teammates what utility they have and call out what utility you have. Consider retaking the same as if you were attacking a site. You do not go in one by one without any utility. You go in throwing all the utility you got and pushing in as a team. For example, an individual Reina Flash or Sova Dart will quickly get shot at. However, if they throw their utility together, the attackers must choose between shooting the blind and getting scanned or shooting the scan but being blind as you push out. Again, don't just dry entry one by one like so many players do. Another point to keep in mind during a retake is if the attackers are down numbers. You need to expect them to hold aggressive angles in a post plant situation because their chances of winning the round is already low. Likewise, if the attackers were able to fake a hit and planted the bomb on the other site, you need to expect someone to be close to your spawn. For example, if the attackers have planted C site on Haven and have had time to reposition, you should expect someone to be hiding in garage window waiting to peek your spawn. And lastly, as a defender, you need to flank less often. Flanking does not provide much value, especially when the attackers have a sentinel alive. I would limit flanks to only two to three times in a match at most and only when the attackers do not have a sentinel player alive. You gain much more value rotating from your spawn and retaking with your team than you do on a flank. And if you're trying to get better game sense, check out my previous video over how to predict your opponents. Make sure to drop a like, subscribe, and follow my Twitch for more content, and I'll see you in the next one.